Hey guys, so I want to take a look at um, Ada Cardano. I have it open right now on the weekly time frame. So when I just I just marked a few uh, significant regions out here. So this horizontal trend line, it marks. You see right here the the price rejected off it here, came back up, and then we had quite a bit of a fight with it right here for about a month and a half. And then as soon as we broke this horizontal trend line, that's when we shot up and that's when the bull market really took off. This is the peak. And then for from September 21st, no, September 6, 2021, all the way down until we broke out of it in, in January um, 23rd, 2023. So that's a long, that's about a year and a half of a bear market and, and a period where this downtrending resistance just kept rejecting the price. And now we broke out of it, and not only have we broken out of it, but we retested it. So when you have a significant uh, level of resistance like this, whether it's you know going down or horizontal or whatever, you're gonna typically you're gonna retest it, and we've retested it not only once but twice. So here we came down, we retested it. We had this this candle with the long wick, shot up off of it, and then the market turned around and came all the way back down, and again. As the price neared this um, downtrend, this downtrending resistance, then uh, we got a huge wick and we just bounced off it again. And interesting, whenever you see, like, uh, whether it's a double top or a double bottom, if you want to get an indication if it's going to turn around, what you can do is look for divergences. So if I pop up, um, here's a divergence indicator. It's basically just an RSI that kind of plots out bullish and bearish divergences. But um, the, the downside is it kind of like it marks it on a chart a little bit late. But as you can see right here, it's not hard to just see it for yourself. So basically, I, I say this pretty much every video, but you'll see that this price came below this previous low. Okay, so if I'm going to connect them, you'll see this trend line down slope slightly. But if I look at the divergence indicator, which is just, just an RSI, or it actually the divergence is, in, is, you can see it on both of these. So the stochastic, you see you have a low, and then you have a higher low. And then also on the RSI divergence indicator here, you have the same thing. You have a low and then a higher low. See? So this this these two lines slant up, and this one kind of slants down. So that... I mention it all the time, that's a bullish divergence. So that's indicative that the price is going to reverse course and likely head up. Now, this is a weekly chart. This is a weekly chart. So whenever you do uh, an analysis on a coin, you want to do like a top-down analysis. So you want to look at what's going on on the higher time frames first because the signals you get on a higher time frame, they hold more weight than lower time frame signals simply because there's a lot more traders looking at these levels. And the big money looks at the higher time frame levels particularly. So if we dial it down to the daily, we're seeing uh, it's just a little indecisive price action here. We came down, we're making a higher high. It's kind of fighting with this level of resistance here, which actually when I plot it across, it does actually seem significant. So if I take a horizontal trend line here, and I, I like to draw at the body of the candle, but the wicks are still significant, but when I'm doing the trend lines, I do the body because a lot of the time you'll get fake out, see the wicks come up. It's where the body closes that really matters. So I wouldn't consider this a breakdown, breakout. We're on the daily. I wouldn't consist, consider this to be a breakout unless we had a body close above this horizontal resistance level. So you see here, actually, this is a very significant level on the chart. So you see it served, this level served as support here, support here. When we broke it, we, we dumped rapidly. Um, and when we broke it on the upside, we shot up rapidly. Again, we came down. This line served as support, shot up again. And here we are battling with it once more. So this is very important to see that on the daily, the strong resistance is about 0.297 cents. And right now, we're not far from it. So taking a long right now when you're this close to significant resistance on the daily time frame... It's not something I would personally do. In this situation, you're probably better off. Um, well, I, I want to be careful what I say. If you short, you're, you're, you can easily get liquidated by one of these wicks that shoot up. So you'd have to put your stop up here, which actually is pretty, pretty good. You're looking at placing a stop at around 30 cents, and then you would target 
probably around here. You know what I would do? I would take a trend line and I would connect. I'd probably like connect it like this. So if I was to short, I wouldn't here. Let me, let me just give you an example. I'm not telling you to short, by the way. I'm not shorting this. But just to give you an idea of, of how, to, how to approach this market here. So the stop loss, you would put it right up here. So you'd risk 5% and you would target, mm, see? You would target a 6% gain. For me, that's not very that appealing. It's almost one-to-one. -one. I look for a better risk to reward entry. So right now I would just sit this one out. Let's dial it down to the four hour and see what we got here. Okay, again, it's fighting, but it is continually making, oh, I made a little bit of, bit of a lower uh, lower price action here, but, but again, nothing that makes me want to jump in either a short or a long. Okay, so let's, um, let's switch the chart here and go to this one because I have different indicators set up on here. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to put this on. And what I like about this, it shows me like significant order block levels where a lot of uh, transactions take place. And these levels definitely serve as supports and resistance levels. So typically when you break one, for example, if you broke out of this box, um, it's very likely that you're going to come up here. So say if you break, if the price breaks 58 cents, then I would be looking around this $1.14 mark. Um, let me check the daily here. Okay, so this is this is what I like to use quite frequently. It's very important, and a lot of traders don't know this, but it, you really want to mark the previous day high and the previous day low on your charts. So let's dial it down even further. And I want to go to the one hour here. And we can see, okay. So now we're seeing that I know if the price were to come down to this previous day low, I'm fairly confident that there'll be some kind of reaction off this level. So if, for example, the price does come down here and you can set alerts or you can just even place like a limit buy order down here with a tight stop loss, if the price came down to 28, 0.2891 cents, I could look to that as a buy and then that would likely give me the kind of risk to reward that I would... Um, would be more favorable. But remember on the longer term time frame, you're you're right up against major weekly resistance, right? So you're not going to be entering this trade and hoping it hoping for it to go real like a huge gain. This is just will just be for like a, a quick scalp over over maybe a couple days. So let's theoretically okay if we entered a long position right here and we didn't want to wait for it to go down and we targeted the previous day high here we'd be looking at almost 3%. And then if we put our stop just below this previous day low, that would be, we'd be so we would, we would risk 1.47% to make almost 3%. That's a two to one risk to war ratio. That's more of a trade that I'd be interested in, but I would be, that would be more appealing if the price came down. Like I said, if the price came down and we were able to get in down here, for example, then I could just place my stop. I can even place it right there. Risk risk 83, not even 1%, and then try to target all the way up here, 4.25. See, that's a trade I would I would want to get in. So if, you know what, I might even set an alert. If the price comes down to this level, I might try to get in, place my stop just below this this region here, this order block, risk less than one risk less than one percent to try to make uh 4.22%. See, that's a trade I want to get in. But anyway, that is Cardano for now. Let me look, hold on, let me look at the uh, the stochastic on the long-term time frame. Let me turn this off. And let's see. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, we are really, um, guys, this could be, we could be coming, this is like probably likely the period where we're forming a double bottom here. We saw when I started the video that this is showing all kinds of bullish divergence. And then we might be getting to a point where this stochastic starts to turn back up and then we head back up for, for the bull market, right? And that aligns with the four-year cycle theory and that's pretty much what I think is going to happen. For now though, I'm just trading shorter time frames, looking for scalps, and I'm not personally going to um, get too enthusiastic on this until we break this level once again 
This is the most significant level on the Cardano chart. And again, that is at just under 30 cents. It's 0.2965. So if we start clo closing candles, daily candles, with the bodies above this line, that's when I start to get really bullish. All right, guys, that's, that wraps it up. Subscribe if you want to uh, watch more of these analysis videos. And uh, have a good day. Bye.